we would, would like to start um, a warm welcome from our part uh, to all uh, the participants of this video uh, meeting. Uh, we welcome you to our lunch talk series, uh, Healthy and Biodiversity Edible Cities. And today, uh, our topic is Seeds of Change, Biodiversity Community, Biodiverse Community Gardens as Tools for Social Empowerment. And I'm really glad uh, to um, have here with us uh, Julian Siegers. He is um, the responsible of the um, edible city Esch sur Asset uh, in Luxembourg. And um, he works for an, a nonprofit organization which is um, uh, which aims to implement um, yeah, um, community gardens um, and to help unemployed people to find work and reintegration into society. And um, yeah, they will recently in, in, in the next month start um, a big new project funded by the Interact program. Congratulations from our side. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure that we will have uh, lots of uh, interesting insights later on. And um, yeah, and then we will have also time for discussions. Um, we will start uh, with a short intro to, to our current um, uh, project. You, most of you, you are part already of the Adobe City Network, um, which was a uh, project funded by the European Commission. And we recently in, in June started a new project, which is um, um, aims to link healthy and biodiverse aspects of the edible city. So uh, with some few slides, I would like to introduce to you um, a bit our mission and co-creation strategy, which is also valid for the, the new project. We talk about edible city solutions, and these are um, solutions uh, that overcome the mismatch between nature-based solutions and citizens by deepening the social dimension of nature-based solutions. We aim to mainstream uh, successful co-creation practice um, uh, from edible city solutions because they are mostly socially inclusive. They invite citizens to co-create the sustainable development of their society, to proactively change the urban environment to their own benefit, and also to induce a paradigm shift of lifestyle. So what we uh, aim, and you are part of this co-created community of knowledge and practice. Um, Adobe City Solutions cover a wide range of urban uh, farming, food production, distribution, and consumption. One essential part, of course, are the community gardens that are in the core of um, the day today. Um, these solutions aim to um, uh, combine closed loop systems. Um, so we aim on a sustainable use of water, nutrient and waste. And of course, we have a lot of uh, measures in our solutions that foster urban biodiversity and health, health of the planet, but also health of the people. So um, we aim on uh, urban food production that uses innovative principles of ecological design, closed material and energy flows. Um, why it's important to uh, not talk only about edible cities, but on uh, uh, talk about healthy and biodiversity friendly edible cities. We know from literature that biodiversity supports the provision of ecosystem services, which are often health relevant. Um, we have uh, in evidence that biodiversity makes happy. And we have also some evidence that biodiversity supports public and planetary health. Um, of course, it's important to support biodiversity where people live and work, so they have a con close contact to um, nature. And of course, biodiversity is an attractive uh, element of our landscapes. So uh, we will share later the, the slides and also in, in the YouTube channel, you can then see more evidence also on scientific evidence that you could check. Um, 
shortly one slide on our current Habidi project, which is on healthy and biodiversity, biodiverse edible cities. We implement currently 40 community gardens in Germany. Um, we will develop guidelines for the implementation of community gardens in municipalities, and we will uh, study the effects of species-rich community gardens on health of adults and on biodiversity patterns in and around the gardens. So today, the lunch talk um, will uh, start with an input from Julian and um, uh, later, we will come up also with some good examples uh, from the social cohesion program in Berlin, uh, a program that's the, that is also in, um, um, in, uh, established in many other German cities. So the floor is yours, Julian. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Ina and uh, Stefanie, for inviting me, for giving me the opportunity to present our, our project and to present also the organization I work for, which is the organization Siegel Esch. Um, just a very short introduction of the, of the organization. As you said, it's an NGO. Um, we uh, try to respond to certain or specific needs of the city's um, population, of the citizens. Um, by employing people with uh, difficulties finding jobs. So um, I will be more, I get more into detail um, on that afterwards. Um, so our, our organization, um, we have several departments. For example, we have a department who is providing free bikes, bicycles to rent, or we have a nursery, we have a a restaurant, we have a shop with only local products, um, we help older people move out their furniture and also the department where I work in, which is on the, the next slide. Um, it's uh, all related to uh, nature and the environment. So my department has four main pillars, which is one, the env environmental education, um, which means we have the um, the infrastructure to do animations with especially kids, uh, especially also disabled kids um, or older people for suffering from Alzheimer, for example. And we do animations during uh, the season, I would say from March to November, nearly every day. So there's different groups uh, coming to, to our location and we work with them in the garden. Um, then we do sustainable construction. Um, basically, we transform wooden pallets into garden furniture, but um, in fact, nearly everything we need to, to build, we build, we can build ourselves because um, we have the, the possibility, the human resources and um, the facilities to do this. Uh, another big uh, pillar is the production and sale of organic vegetables. Um, I will show you this on the next slide. Um, and of course, um, the reason why I'm invited to this talk is um, our pillar of the development of the edible city, Esh Al Zed. And as mentioned, all this we can do by doing the social professional integration of people. So on the next slide, you can uh, see a little bit of our infrastructure here in Esh Al Zed. Um, I have to say we have two different locations. One is in Escher Z, which is it's called the Escher Gemäßgart, which means uh, Gemäß is the Luxembourgish word for vegetables and Gart for garden, um, where it's it's a big greenhouse with um, gardens around, um, where we can uh, employ a team of around uh, twenty people, and then we have an, a second location, which is the Calendula Garden. It's called. It is a little village, 20 kilometers outside of um, of Eschal Z, just to for the people because Luxembourg is a very small country and people might not know where Eschal Z is. It's in the south of Luxembourg, so we are really on the French border, but it's only also uh, 30 minutes to the, to Germany and 20 minutes to Belgium. So um, yeah, as as you all know, Luxembourg is a very very small country. Um, so uh, basically, the, the language we speak here with, um, with all the people who are employed 
is is French. So on the pictures, you see a little bit um, how it looks like uh, to work uh, for Siegel Ash. In my department, we have this uh, the vegetable fields, we have the, um, the buildings, um, completely uh, ecological construction. We have them on the left, you see a little picture of a garden where they have these little uh, garden spaces, which is, for example, every uh, class has their own uh, parcel where they can from do from seed to harvest during a whole season. They, they work in, into these uh, garden sections. We have a professional kitchen where we transform the vegetables we produce on our own. Um, we sell a lot of uh, our vegetables to, to kindergartens, to the canteens of, of nurseries in, in the city. Yeah, and as um, I mentioned, we have greenhouses. You can see that on the next slide. Um, I give you some some numbers. So we have 960 square meter gre greenhouses in in Esch, uh, the educational garden and the bioclimatic building inside the greenhouse, where where my office is, and the construction hangar where we transform the wood into furniture. Then just a kilometer away, we have the one hectare of vegetable production field, and uh, as I mentioned, the Calendula project, where we have also an ed environmental education center, one hectare of production field. 1,300 um, square meters of greenhouses, the educational garden, a small animal shelter, and uh, like I said, all the, the buildings are made of wood, earth, and straw. We produce um, around about 35,000 kilos of uh, organic vegetables every year. And we have, uh, like I said, nearly every day also animations with kids in, on, the, on the locations. Yeah. So this now you have a little overview on, on where we are and and what we do. So let's uh, jump into the the topic of the of the edible city project here in Esh uh, Az. So it's on the next slide. Um, as uh, Ina already mentioned, in fact, it's the same principle. I think nearly for every edible city, the the main focus is on uh, creating ecological awareness. Um, of course, it's important to, to connect people. Um, like I said, we do this, we can, we can realize all this by employing people who, um, in fact, are, are in need for, for a job and who get, uh, everyone gets a two years contract uh, at Siegel Ash. And that's the maximum. During these two years, we try everything to get them a, um, a job. So, um, uh, and at the moment, we are around about, there is around about 30% of all our uh, people working, our employees working in this project, program who, who find a, a job on a long-term long contract basis afterwards. Yeah. So um, I will go now a little bit more into detail of, of what we do, um, how many community gardens we have. You can see it on the next slide. Um, so this is basically our approach to every project we do. Um, if there is, for example, uh, the demand or, um, of a citizen who says it would be nice to have a commun community garden um, where he lives because there is nothing like this, um, then he approaches to us, um, we sit together, we do the conception, see if it's possible. Uh, of course, every... Um, Piece of piece of land here in the city is owned by the city, so we need to talk to the city uh, as well. Um, try to get an agreement or see what it's possible. So the the whole conception part, we are um, in fact we, we we play the main role. Afterwards, um, of course, as well for the realization, as you just saw our um, our infrastructure, we have we are very lucky that we can do everything on our own. So uh, we are not dependable on other companies helping us. We have the human resources, we have the, the skills to, to build a community garden from, from, a, from where it's only maybe a field or something, we can, we can do everything on our own. Uh, so this makes things a lot easier. Um, of course, when it's done, uh, we're, never just gonna, we're never gonna say, okay, now you have your community garden, now, um, project done for us, you can now, uh, or the people who are like trying to be implemented, 
we leave it on their own. No, we try to monitor the whole the whole process, um, which is very important for us because, as I just mentioned, it's uh, all the community gardens are not built on surfaces we own. So, in fact, um, we have a certain responsibility towards the community. When the community, some uh, more important people drive by and they see that uh, out of the community garden developed into a jungle or um, yeah, then we would uh, get uh, remarks and that might be have been the last community garden we have built. So, of course, it's important for us to know what is planted. We also give guidelines when to plant. So we sit together with every community garden group at the beginning of the year doing a whole planification of what to plant, when to plant and helping them doing the whole during the whole process. We also help them uh, communicate, which means we use our social media um, accounts. Uh, our possibilities to um, to maybe if they are in need of new members or maybe they want to do um, a festival in the garden, um, we help them with everything. Um, then, of course, um, I will show you that later when we go a little bit more into detail uh, of every garden, because every garden is very different. Every group of every garden is very different. So it can be that people are, are not capable of doing certain gardening work because they are too heavy to do so as we have the human resources the main power the manpower we we do the the heavy work for example as well and um as mentioned as well animation is a big part of of my job so i really try to to get people to 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 motivate them to do animations in the gardens related to the, to the group um, I will just show you now. So on the next slide, you see the map of the city of Esh, which um, looks like Africa, but um, you can see that there is, uh, we have a, we have, in fact, Esh is a very industrial city. So all this on the left, you see there's, uh, there is a big steel factory and we have woods in, in the south and, um, and where you have these, the little fruits and vegetables, you see where, uh, where our community gardens and urban gardening projects are located. So, um, and it's becoming more and more. Um, a side fact is that the Edible City project um, could, was possible to do because we have an, had an interact project, which was called Crea Vea, uh, took place from 2018 to 2021. So there we, with the money we got from the European Union, it was possible to create three community gardens and um, to do certain urban gardening projects as well. Now, the last two years when the project was finished, it was um, most important to maintain the, the, um, the activities and, and actions which took place during uh, Crea Vea and also to extend them. So now we have six community gardens and um, also more urban gardening projects than before. And we just got the approving that um, from on 2025, we will do a next, a new uh, interact project um, starting, yeah, like if everything goes the way it should go, then in a few weeks. Okay, so uh, on the next slide. Mm. We were sitting together because we uh, there's not only a community gardens owned by our, by my organization but also other organizations in the city of Esh have community gardens um so we thought it's in it's important to be in exchange and um as every community garden faces more or less the same problems i would say um of the same difficulties um we try to uh, what we did is to regroup every organization in charge of a community garden and to build up a charter. Um, in the charter, there are certain rules of behavior when you want to join a community garden group. Because like I said, the difficulties, for example, um, as you might all know, when there is, for example, vegetables stolen by people who no one knows, um, there's things uh, smashed, um, there's trash in the gardens. Like I said, every, every garden has, has more or less the same problems. It depends on where the garden exactly is, but more or less. So we, we said it, which it's a good thing to, re, to group together and to do this charter. Also make it a little bit more official 
uh, what we did was we um, we built um, the same entrance signs for every garden, which is on the next picture. And um, I must say it, it helped because it um, it showed the people who passed by that um, it is not just um, a space where some people uh, grouped up and and have made a community garden, but it's uh, there is organizations and the city of Esh behind it. So every garden has now his name on the sign. There's a short version of the charter. There's um, a board where every garden can be creative and present themselves in their own way. And there's a blackboard where they can put up um, when the next animation is or when the next festival in the garden is or, or things like this. So this uh, was definitely a good decision to do and help every community garden uh, in that sense. So um, on the next slide. Um, I will present you the, um, the first community garden we have. Um, as I just said, every community garden of us is different in the way of um, how it's maintained, especially by who it is maintained. So, for example, this garden, which is called Rose des Vons, um, I do animations with, um, uh, how do you say this in English? It's an organization who takes care of younger people, young adults who are in difficulties. So um, they come together with these kids or young adults. And then we do once a week, we work in that in that garden. And it helps uh, these kids a lot to be uh, to be in nature, to um, to see during a whole year or during maybe two years or during the time they are and they invest themselves that uh, actually the, the plants they, they, they put in at the beginning of the year, that afterwards it becomes uh, a vegetable to eat. And um, this is why this organization, which is called uh, Centre Formida, they, they, it's a very important thing for them to, to do this with, their, with the people who are in, with the kids who are in, in the program. Um, for every community garden we have, we give also the opportunities, of course, for all the people who, who live around the community garden to be integrated in the group as well. So we, we never exclude someone. Even there is organizations um, maintaining the, the garden. But, but it's also in this garden, there are, there are people living around, especially older people who also like to join us when we do the animations and working together with the kids, which is especially the, the case for the next garden, because it's... Um, it's just beside um, a home for older people. So um, the older people, they come together with, them, with, the, with the nurses, and then we meet together with uh, people from, from a nursery, so, uh, so with kids from a nursery, so we're very, very small kids. So all together, uh, united during the animations um, in this garden, of course. Then we, as uh, Siegel, as uh, we have to adapt the garden as well, because older people they need to work on on uh, in higher um, on higher surfaces. The kids can can work on the in the ground, and um, it's um, I started this this year, and it's sometimes a little complicated because, of course, for the older people they are they are not as as flexible anymore because of the weather, especially when it's too hot or when it's uh, too cold. They they cannot go outside. Um, so yeah, it's always a lot of, of communication, which is very, which is very important. Um, and of course it can be that, that, that we, I'm only there with the kids, but, um, all in all, this was um, a very nice thing that we, um, developed. Uh, the next garden, um, is a garden I, um, do, it's also a community garden. Like I said, everyone can join the group, but this. Um, I realized that it's always the best thing to have um, some other organization integrated because that way you can guarantee that um, that there's something happening in this garden. For example, this garden I do with um, 16, 17 years old uh, students from from the school just beside this garden, and they come. They, I would say once a month, and then uh, we do gardening work with them um, as uh, once a month is not very much to maintain such a garden. I try to motivate the people who live around by um, 
distributing uh, flyers and stuff, but so far there was no one interested. So I'm, I'm lucky to have them. Um, next year there will be also um, a class of a nursery home joining, joining this, this community garden as well. Um, so exact, this is a garden. Um, which is only two kilometers, yeah, you can go to the next slide, because it's only two kilometers away from this garden, but it's a completely different situation, because there's only people who live around, there's no organization involved, and it functions very well with only the, the people living around that garden. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's, um, it's pretty interesting to see also where the garden is located. I mean, of course, you know it from, from your cities as well, every part of the city is a little different in terms of people who live there. But here, it, it, the garden functions completely on, on its own. <clears throat> um, this group, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a role model, I must say, because um, these, this group of people who are completely different people, all, because Luxembourg is a uh, country where there's, we have many expats and you have so many different nationalities. <clears throat> And in this group, where you can see, see on the picture on the table, we have like five different nationalities only in this in this picture. In my in my team right now, we have I have twenty um, employees in the program. We have thirteen different nationalities. So it's um, yeah, it's it's a good thing that the garden can can really unite people uh, in that way. Um, same as a little bit for the next garden. Um, where also the, um, the demand came from, because as you can see that this is, it's a new area of the city where there was, it was in fact, it was nothing before. And then they started to build apartment houses. And of course, someone said it, it's sad because um, architectural planning nowadays doesn't uh, or often forgets uh, the nature aspect. And then he said, yeah, and then there was a guy approaching us and said, it's very sad that I see community gardens, gardens in the city, but there's nothing like this in the... Um, in the new area where I live now, so we um, we sat on the table, and of course we, we we told them that it's we can do everything for you, but it it's not the the goal is not that there's an, afterwards a community garden and our organization has to go all the time, and and our people who are in our program have in fact are the gardeners of these community gardens. So then we also was the the call uh, via flyers and via signs that we we try to create a group which worked pretty well. And there's a nursery now um, just beside. They come to the garden. They benefit from it. And um, the garden is only one year old, but it's also so far it's um, it's a pretty nice uh, thing, uh, and it developed uh, very good in every sense. No, um, I think this was ah yeah, there's mm. exactly this is the the latest uh, community garden project we have. We were also approached by a group of artists who have their studio just beside this community garden. But as well, they said we, we are limited because everything we need to buy, for example, for the garden, we need to buy, we need to um, take our own money. And, um, and every, every, heavy, every heavy work, we, we, are, we need to ask friends or something like this. So we said, okay, you can join our network of community gardens and then you are sure that all of these things we take care of and you can just enjoy really the, the gardening work and um, this is what we did now and we need to redo in fact the whole garden because it's it's a little bit um, too creative and um, the, so uh, this will be um, a project for for next next year so beside all the community gardens we have I'll just give you a short overview of the different urban and gardening actions we also do in the city. We have, for example, built up, um, I don't know if it's the English word is correct, but it's a sphere um, where you can also sit in with, with kids and uh, do animations inside, plant, uh, plant your plants. And um, it's um, yeah, visually a, a nice thing to have. <clears throat> then we have a big trace in the main shopping street of Esch. Um, the interesting thing is that we the plants we put in these trays are related to the shop beside. So which means um, when, they're, when our, one of our trays is beside a bakery, we only plant plants who are related to bread, for example, 
or uh, beside the pharmacy, we have only plants related to medicine. Um, so this is something also we developed during um, the CREAVEA project and we still maintain it. So we do it now for six years and it works pretty good. Um, of course, you face problems like people throwing trash in it and we need to go there once a week, uh, clean it up. And But I think this is, this is part of, of the job. Um, also at the main train station, which was only, um, there was no nature at all. We put up um, 20 um, trays with, uh, with plants and we have the parklet um, solution. It's similar to in the Gretzel Oasen, for example, from Vienna, um, which is a thing we do. And like I said, we, um, we try to develop the, the Edible City project all the time. For example, on the next slide, you can see a project we did this year, which is in the, also in the new part uh, of the town where there was um, where there, are, there was a lot of new construction, but there was nearly no nature, no trees, uh, nothing. So um, we we had we had uh, the idea to do something there, and um, we created a project we call Ash. Uh, Bival because the um, part of the city is Esh Belval, so uh, we wanted to to um, show the people that biodiversity is very important. But if we don't do anything for biodiversity, well, it's pretty hard for for all, for example, for all our insects. Um, so we um, we built up these um, yeah these trays in uh, um, which are related uh, to to bees. And uh, of course, this year the plants are still small, but during the next uh, years they will all grow, and we will have like a green, green spot um, where where we put also where we put <clears throat> signs um, where where the whole biodiversity um, elements are explained, and we give information about the plants. And um, this thing um, we did is. Uh, build up in a way that it can be easily modulated. So it's if there's, for example, an, an event on on that surface, we can just move these these trays in every in every sense, or we can also just make it bigger and bigger every year. Depends if the community um, gives the okay. Yeah. So um, that's it from uh, my part, and um, I'm looking forward for to any questions you have later on. Yeah, thank you, Julian. Uh, really impressive. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, we um, we have some some further slides with some examples from Berlin, and I would propose that then later we we can uh, uh, open for discussion. Um, yeah, so we we have um, um, a project in in Berlin which is quite uh, um, successful and also really related to community gardens. Many community gardens got their funding from this, and I would like to share some insights uh, that uh, have been um, collected during the the um, realization of this program and the activities there. So. Um, uh, the program uh, started as uh, the Social City Program from 1999 to 2020 and is now running as the so-called Social Cohesion Program. Uh, it's about 200 million euro per year and um, it's not, um, of course, not only um, a project in Berlin, it's across whole Germany. And there are 50, 30 um, areas across Germany that are uh, working in this program. I would share, uh, would like to share some insights from Berlin and Stephanie will also share some links in the chat so you can have some deeper looks um, um, into the material. In general, in Berlin, the neighborhoods that are um, um, vulnerable in terms of socioeconomic parameters, they um, are monitored and selected. So you can see in this slide, there are um, different um, um, neighborhoods that are in the focus and as action areas. Uh, and you see the changes here, for example, between 2008 and 2021. So you have um, areas that uh, that uh, will go out of the, of the program when certain parameters are improved. Um, 
What is the overall goal of the of the program is to promote self-help and voluntary involvement. Um, and another goal is to improve access to education. Um, another goal is the improvement of public space, of the quality of public space. And it is a really an important goal also to strengthen or initiate, if they are not there, local networks and local corporations. As Julian uh, said before, this is crucial uh, for maintaining such infrastructure. And the overall goal is, of course, to upgrade the social infrastructure. So uh, some facts about uh, the social cohesion program uh, from Berlin. Um, you can uh, also uh, check this documentation here. The link will be in the chat. Um, the, um, the neighborhood management um, in each neighborhood, which is part of the program, implements local strategies via an interdisciplinary team and works with local offices. It is compulsory to um, to enhance participation, to involve neighborhood councils, to do workshops, local conferences, etc. There are in total four funds that support local projects in five different action fields. And something also really important is that there is an integrated action and development concept um, um, in in all neighborhoods, which guides um, 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 locally tailored strategies um, um, with a monitoring and evaluation program. So the funds that are available have totally different amounts, and I will share, uh, show you some examples later on for projects that have been realized with these different funds. So there are really small grants for resident-led uh, projects. There are community grants quite often named. If you check the list of these action funds, uh, there are project funds that support larger initiatives to establish uh, more extensed gardens or uh, urban agriculture agriculture programs and larger educational programs. There are also building uh, funds, so the, there are also constructions or renovations of infrastructure that can be um, funded by this fund. And there are network funds that scale um, successful project, projects uh, on a citywide level uh, with uh, qu quite larger funds. Um, some examples you can uh, you can check in the um, uh, document, which is called Esbar Kietze for Berlin, which was actually also developed during the Edison Net project. Uh, we will post the the uh, the link in the chat, and um, yeah, there you can have some some further insights. Um, one example I I choose from the list of the the realized project is. Uh, Moabit, which is uh, in Moabit, which is a neighborhood in Berlin, so they play a bit with the word. A word. And uh, for example, via this um, small grants funds, also via the action funds, they uh, got easy um, uh, funding for construct raised beds, for build a pizza and bread oven, as an example. So this is funded by the local um, neighborhood management and um, there's also a strong community collaboration within the neighborhood. So they are sharing resources, infrastructure tools, and uh, there are also educational initiatives linked. Um, so um, as uh, in, a bit in the same uh, philosophy like Julian presented the project, it's always important to connect this to local initiatives, to other um, uh, organizations and if you look on the on the um, um, a bit deeper into these um, different funds uh, of the action fund you can look in your neighborhood and look what uh, how the money is spended so here you will see uh, for example the Moabit um, 900 euro in 2023. So it's totally transparent. There can be also, um, uh, yeah, the people from the from the 
uh, from the neighborhood can uh, come up with some project ideas um, and uh, it's uh, really quite accessible for everyone. This is also through that we, um, uh, the, in the, uh, in the neighborhood management, they provide really easy how to, uh, how you can get the, um, the funds, how is the application, the proposal, there are a lot of formulas, but not so complicated. So it's really an easy access um, for the people that can um, use and access these funds. A bit uh, an example which uh, got um, a bit more funding from this larger network network fund um, is the um, the project a project from Marzahn, which is uh, a large um, suburban uh, residential area. Um, it's uh, so uh, called uh, inspiring green learning sanctuaries. Uh, I uh, I translated the, the original name. So it's an idea on integrative urban gardening in the neighborhood. So you have a combination of community gardens, of school gardens, and a horticultural school. So you have community building and also a lot of green learnings uh, related to horticulture, health education, through workshop festivals, etc. So here you are also fostering partnerships and networks across the neighborhood. And this was um, coordinated by the Grüne Liga e.V., um, um, non-profit organization uh, in Germany, which is quite um, uh, successful with such uh, community projects. And uh, as an example, this was an, a project which got the award of best community project and best community garden in Europe in 2014. Another example, uh, totally different, it's, it's this one, the community garden Rixdorf. It's like a public orchard. So you have uh, these uh, apple trees and other orchard uh, species, and it's coordinated by a local um, um, non-profit organization, the Kamakultur, and got funding from the Netzwerk Fund. Um, and here you see also a bit the, the, the numbers. So also here, this type of public space is um, uh, qualitatively enhanced and is um, a place for the local community. Another example that is related to, um, uh, to a former living lab in the Edisonet project that many of you know, it's linked to the Gutsgarten in Hellersdorf, also a neighborhood of Berlin. Um, uh, there, with this project of the Hellersdorfer Gesichter, Hellersdorf Faces, um, they um, highlighted the role of community garden, gardens as a place of encounter. So it's a mixture between gardening, of course, but uh, most of all also art and storytelling. And uh, their old and new neighbors and their lives and um, uh, where, um, yeah, uh, explored and highlighted in this artistic way in terms of art and storytelling. And this was a, a really a good uh, point to foster connections through the gardens. So there were nearly 100 portraits um, um, drawn by Jihad Issa, a um, um, uh, Syrian artist, and uh, the biographies were selected by Cecil Wagner. And this was also funded by um, neighborhood management and uh, was really an um, interesting example. And in the chat, you can check the website and um, uh, some examples. Well, all these um, funding applications, they you can find on the local um, um, on a lo local online uh, website. Um, it's quite easy. It could be easier, of course, but it's really accessible. Well, some lessons learned that uh, the Berlin uh, Senate, um, the department for um, uh, which is responsible to these um, um, uh, for this program, um, highlighted is of course um, that there uh, there are many pros and many social benefits, uh, fostering environmental justice, etc. Um, the gardens, uh, the community gardens are hubs for social integration, um, for learning, for community building, etc., especially in disadvantaged neighborhoods. 
But of course, there are also some challenges that uh, are there. As also Julian mentioned, there are always some stuff issues. So we always um, need a dedicated individual in the garden to, um, to really uh, maintain the garden in a sustainable way. Uh, of course, there are always resource constraints. One uh, aspect here, which, which we could discuss later as well, <clears throat> are the projectification impacts. So money comes in, then projects are over, and then yeah, um, we need a more continuous uh, support here. <clears throat> and of course, uh, ensuring visibility and the uptake uh, by the community sometimes uh, 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 needs um, quite a significant outreach uh, to enhance the collaboration with the local stakeholders. Some other challenges, of course, in a big city <clears throat> like Berlin with a lot of new constructions is access to space. This is an ongoing topic which is discussed in the community gardening uh, community in the community gardening uh, community in Berlin. An issue is also that we have sometimes a resistance in the local community when we want to initiate a project. So, um, yeah, but uh, there uh, yeah are good arguments, and um, we have to consider this as well that this can slow down a project initiation. So. Um, Initiating a community garden needs some time until this runs well. And um, of course, still there are many issues uh, like inclusive, inclusivity issues. So uh, there are uh, still limited reach out to underrepresented groups. Uh, so this is, uh, needs a proactive uh, tailored outreach strategies, as Julian also mentioned. Some last points. The bureaucratic hurdles are always an issue that uh, um, are discussed and, of course, also legal and administrative barriers. Please check out this documentation that we shared in the chat uh, for uh, more insights. I have to mention two other um, um, programs in Berlin that are um, um, uh, hosted in other Senate departments that are really also important and I hope in uh, in in a future uh, talk here in the lunch talks, we will have also representatives from these departments presenting these programs. Important is the Momentos Garden Program, which is like the Community Garden Program of Berlin, which is based in the Department of Environment, Mobility, Consumer and Climate Protection. And they aim to support existing community gardens, enable the creation of new ones and strengthen their role. Here we will also put um, a link in the chat and hopefully we um, you can also see this uh, this documentation and we will have hopefully uh, in the next year also a talk from this perspective and there is really important as well the berlin food strategy and the so-called program of lebensmittelpunkt also with a lot of different projects um, this is based on the senate uh, of um, um, justice and consumer protection. So here, the main goal is to create community spaces where neighbors share, cook, eat healthy, regional or rescued food. And it's also about promotion of social connection and sustainability. And the aim of the pro program, the ambitious aim of the program is to establish these hubs in every Berlin neighborhood and enabling active participation and transformation of the local food system. So please check out also this projects and also they, these colleagues are invited to um, give an, in a future lunch talk insights from their projects. Okay, so far, um, uh, at this point, I would like to start uh, stop our um, our uh, input and would like to open the discussions. And um, I will have a look on the chat. So Julian, feel free to pick a question up if you feel some. I will now check as well. Um, yeah. Um, Okay, so 
Oh my. I, if I may jump in there yeah, with a question from uh, Frida uh, Brad Smith uh, from Germany. Uh, are you also active in Germany to Julian or publish material in English or German that can be useful for groups trying to set up similar projects? Um, we are not active in Germany directly. Uh, we will be soon um, when we start the new Interact project because we have two partner cities in Germany, which is the city of Saarbrücken and the city of Andernach, which might be well known in the network of edible cities. Um, so via them, we, um, we are partly uh, active in Germany. And what's for the material in, in Luxembourg, in fact, um, the, the main language is Luxembourgish, but um, we all we speak like four languages to five languages every day in a mix. So uh, every, every communication material is in at least three languages. So, um, of course, I can uh, provide you um, with uh, the same information or more information about what we do in, in German or English. No problem. Yeah. And Julian, there's another question to you from Fenja Krote. She is uh, um, impressed by the Estonist <laughs> and impressed by the nice project, beautiful project. Uh, she's uh, asking for uh, the financial structure. How does the financial structure look like? How do you generate the monetary support? You mentioned already the project funding, but uh, how you deal with this issue? Could you give us some insights? Yeah. Um... So meanwhile, the the Creavea, the Interact project, of course, we, we had the, the finances from the European Union uh, additionally. Now, the last three years, there was no Interact project. So we, um, of course, we had a little, a little less money available. But um, for the whole organization, uh, in fact, it works like this. As we... Um, as we employ people with difficulties, uh, which, can, which can be like really people who are at a certain age, can be refugees, immigrants, um, people who have a criminal background, uh, so every kind of, um, of different, different uh, people who are sent to us by the, um, by the how would you say, Arbeitsamt in, in, in English, by the, um, by the government, in fact, we get, of course, uh, financed by the government. Um, so we have, so it's 60-40, it's let's say, around the government and the city of Esch. Uh, in in terms of uh, financing, and of course there is organized there is um, like um, governmental funds. For example, I uh, I put up a, a, a dossier beginning of this year exp um, explaining the Edible City project and um, and telling them that if we want to maintain, if we want to extend these projects, it would be nice to get some additional money. And uh, luckily, this works. So you can always uh, try to to grab some over here and over there. Okay. Thank you, Julian. Uh, yeah, maybe we uh, we will have a future talk on these financial uh, uh, different financial structures that we could discuss. There's a question from Robert Klaassen. Could a garden be too creative? I guess this uh, this was where we are uh, one of your last slides where you said it's uh, chaotic. Could you could you tell us a bit about this? How you manage? Yeah, yeah. What I what I meant by this is um, as as you have. Um, Let's take just an example. You have a community garden and you have like 10, a group of 10 people. And if there is no, no structure, then of course everyone can, can implement himself in every way he wants because there, there's no one who can, who can say no to something. So then we had this, uh, for example, uh, not so long ago, then people brought their own stuff to the garden. For example, um, lights or for example some furniture they didn't use anymore at home and they thought it might fit well into the garden and so everyone brought a little bit of everything and in the end it it, it didn't really look nice as well it was it wasn't and as and what happens then as well then people just leave it there and of course they won't take it back so at one point this it, the whole thing start to rot and um and this is this is where we where we always say um, communication is very important um, because um, we have WhatsApp groups for every for every garden and um, so this is kind of unwritten rules that uh, when when we want to do also we uh, when when I want to do something in the garden I I speak with the group and ask them if it's okay for them if we do this or that and so everyone does the same and so all the gardens like I said um, the city of Ash what they want is that it doesn't become too chaotic. 
that there is a certain structure that it's clean and that every every piece of furniture has its sense and stuff like this so um it was this garden the last one was a little bit too creative because they then they brought like old bath tubs into the garden and and, and because they wanted to to cultivate water plants, which didn't work at all. But, but then these bathtubs stayed in the garden. And think, just simple things like that, where, uh, like, this is what I meant with it became a little bit too creative. OK, yeah, perfect. Um, uh, there's a, a question which is linked to this. Um, um, if things are going too creative, uh, you mentioned uh, that you um, agreed on on um, a charter, on, like, a, um, some rules or some some uh, guidelines um and this uh, maybe linked to this is the question from christina uh, do you know of any good examples on how to deal with liability of regulating public gardening so it's a bit um a discussion we also have in berlin mean uh, mainly in, in public areas how we can uh, keep the place open without excluding others, but also how to to um, manage, uh, let's say, the regulations. Do you yeah. have some more insights on this? Yeah, of course. This is this is very difficult. Um, like I uh, said, it it very much depends on where the garden is, um, how how open it is as well. Um, I mean, what what we try is to leave every garden open. Um, so that there is no fence and uh, you don't need a key to to access. Of course, then um, people, the, the group, we have this we have this discussion all the time because the, the people who come there every Sunday spending their free time uh, planting the vegetables they want to eat by themselves, then they someday they might come and then the vegetables aren't there anymore because someone passed by, he can enter into the garden and he takes out everything he wants. Um, and of course, these people are frustrated and they say, hey, can't we build up a fence? Can we close the gardens? And this is why we have uh, now these entry signs. Um, we, because it's, I think it's important for, um, especially because when, for example, you, have, you are working in your own community garden, there comes someone by and he, he thinks it's an open space. So he says like, okay, I, I, can, I t will take out now all the, the mint leaves. Um, and then how can you say, no, you're not allowed to. Then he will say, yeah, but it's not your garden. Um, but now these people can refer to, mm. it's not my garden, but there is a certain charter. So to be part of this group, you need to accept these rules. You know, and um, of course, there's no contract signed by anyone, but at, at least there's, like I said, the city and an organization behind it. And this prevents people from going too far. Um, and uh, at the end, it's it's all it's all about uh, communication. It's important for us to to uh, do constant uh, posts on on the social media to explain the principles of of community gardens. And then it's also, um, yeah, um, I, I think it will never stop that people will be frustrated, but um, it can be reduced. And this is what we it's an everyday work. So yeah. And we also, we, we, we do experiments, we put up signs, for example, on, when there's a new plantation of strawberries, for example, we put up a sign just beside, this was planted by this and this person on this on this day, uh, please respect these plants, it will be harvested together, you can join the group on that on that date, for example, this helps as well, things like this, um, yeah. Yeah, interesting so point. It answers the question well, yeah. but um, yeah. Well, there is no final answer, but it's of of course uh, really interesting insights. And uh, uh, Christina, if you uh, maybe you could write us an email, uh, we are also interested maybe to uh, to see some of your experiences from Sydney. I I see in the chat that you have uh, research there on uh, regulation policy for public gardening. So it would be interesting maybe in some of our future talks to get some insights from the other part of the world, from the other way around. So please uh, send us an email uh, so that we can come in contact and invite and figure out how it could work. Okay, then I see in the chat um, um, uh, from Marjorie, uh, Landers, I read that you also grow on mounds. Is this instead of wooden raised beds? Why do you not grow straight on the ground? Do you test the soil before you take over 
a space and before you take over a space yeah 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 this is a particular situation we have here in uh, the south of luxembourg because the south of luxembourg is comparable to the ruhrgebiet in germany we had uh, huge uh, steel factories here and nearly i think 80 percent of this of the soil is uh, polluted so it took us ages also to to find a spot where we can grow organic vegetables And there's still so many spots in the city where you are not able to, to put vegetables straight into the ground because it's polluted. So we need to work with, with um, higher surfaces and, and bring uh, non-polluted soil to the community gardens. Yeah, interesting. Another topic which is quite interesting, and I know there are some here in the call as well that, that are really interested in this topic as well. I see another man, uh, another comment from from New Zealand, if I understand as well, um, a statement more. Do um, uh, well, do local garden groups need to have formally structure to apply for funding? This is some uh, is more a question, but I I think you um, in these small action funds that I showed there you can also as a person apply for this money, but often there are some um, uh, some um, NGO structures behind this, and this makes it uh, complicated. You need this if you have. Um, if you get, need to get larger funds um but as we have shown in the example from from Hella, uh, from Marzahn with the grüne liga they work like a um, umbrella organization to organize the funding which then goes to a small project that have not these formal structures um yes we uh, in in new zealand is there this barrier that that you need um a formal organization, as I understood this well. It's also an issue, regulations are things we will have um, uh, on our on our um, notebook and uh, look if we can um, uh, come up with a talk uh, focused on these uh, uh, things. Okay, we are now, we've, uh, we, just the hour is over. <laughs> I would like to thank you so much um, for your participation and questions. Uh, it was a lot, Julian, so there was no time for opening completely the discussion, but I think really thank you for, for your inputs. Um, um, uh, we would invite you warmly to the next um, lunch talk to continue this discussion. We will share all the documents. Uh, Stephanie already wrote in the in the the chat we are have a newsletter so in the newsletter we will put also all the links we have and maybe further material julian if you can share some more data then we can um we can share exchange on this and i would also uh, invite you to upload in general your information your projects on the edisitnet platform stephanie can you post again the 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 edisitnet platform links there you can open um also for Forum on certain topics. You can put your examples. You can share your um, your experiences there as well. And um, yeah, our next lunch talk is on. Stephanie, help me, please. On twenty eighth January at one p.m. Yes, and so it's uh, on the topic uh, transforming food systems, healthy diets for people and planet. Yeah, there we have some interesting points. So we look a bit on on the relation between food and gardening and community and health, of course. Um, so you are warmly invited. And uh, so, so far, I wish you nice yeah, holidays now and a good start in the new year and see you all in the new garden year. And Julian, Many thanks to you. It is impressive. Congratulations. And we keep the contact. And we're looking forward when your new project starts to have a new talk and uh, to get new insights. And great job that you are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your attention. And yeah, see you soon. Have a nice uh, time now. <laughs>